Hi, thanks for tuning in to episode three. Today we're covering Smart Dialogue, a tutorial brought to you by Mega Real Entertainment. Stick around for our first code word to win a cool prize. First and foremost, you gotta pick your screenwriting platform. There's a lot of cool stuff out there. I used to use Adobe Story, but then one day Adobe just abandoned it, which was really not cool. But ultimately I ended up biting the bullet and purchasing Final Draft but it has really paid for itself in my opinion and in my experience over the years because it has all these nifty uh, screenplay breakdown tools that help you plan your production, which is really important if you're an independent producer as well. You can sit there and work it out manually, but it creates a lot of extra work for you as opposed to using a program. I have reviewed screenplays that people just wrote without any software and the formatting was really bad. It was really hard to follow. The golden rule here is to always ask yourself, how can I show what I want to say rather than say it? Why use dialogue to move a story forward when you can use moving pictures? <laughs> it is called a motion picture after all. Now check this out. It's just that he loves taking the dog to the water. And I can understand that because it's really beautiful. I've been there with him before and it's one of my favorite places too. I just wish that he would tell me so that we could maybe plan to go together. Or, it's just that he loves taking the dog to the water. I love to go there too, it's such a beautiful place. I just wish that he would talk to me about it so that we can plan to go together. So that was a really good example of how we can show what the person is visualizing rather than just have them tell it to us. We could also try a circumstance in which we see what the person is thinking and feeling, but have her saying something completely different. This next example is from the film Junkie. I can't get anything, it's too dark. Okay, whatever he threw out is ours now. Great, that means one of us has to go in and get it. Expository dialogue is explaining things for the sake of the audience. That's not smart dialogue. Next up, we have an example from the Slayer Chronicles and a sneak peek at the upcoming film. Hey everybody, Mike and Jordan here from Non-Corporeal Investigations. Now, as you know, we have a tipster email where we take suggestions on what cases to look into, and then we randomly select one each week. Now, this week's lucky winner is Lucky 77. It's Lucky 77 with us. One of the distributors that looked at Slayer pointed this out. He said that he wasn't so sure that we needed the email plus the introduction. This is not expository dialogue, but Again, he has a good point. We use screen time to explain the same thing more than once. Giving your characters a unique voice is also very important. Tell me more about these dreams. Well, it's still an unresolved issue for me. Probably take the jaws of life to sort it out. Tell me more. You know, for the most part, when it comes to my little brother Alex, it, it, it's always the same. What about the rest of the parts? Well, that may be a bit of a stretch for you, Doc, but the shit I see in my dreams, it helps me solve cases. That's your subconscious mind sorting out the crime scenes. Uh, maybe some of it. I suspect this may continue for you until you can find some closure, some way to let it go. Have you considered ways of letting go outside of actually solving the crime? Uh, <laughs> no, ma'am. I really don't see a way. You can face everything and recover. <laughs> I know. I know.
Subject Unknown is a screenplay that I wrote a couple of years ago. I've always been very proud of this particular screenplay, and I cannot wait to produce this movie. It's a psychological thriller. It's awesome. And I put a lot of time into character development. I also hired a company to do a complete script breakdown for the purpose of putting into a packet to find funding for this project. And what they do is they go through and they tell you what your demographic is. They tell you what the potential rating is. <clears throat> they tell you they tell you which platforms they think that the film will do strongest in. And they give you an overall breakdown of your dialogue, your characters, your story. And the number one compliment that I got, the highest ranking area in Subject Unknown is smart dialogue. So I want to talk about smart dialogue for the last portion of this episode. In Final Draft, I use Command F. If you're on Windows, it's going to be Control F. And that allows you to search for something within your screenplay. I type the character name that I want to work on. For this example, we're going to start with Captain Snyder. In my mind, I imagine the voice of Michael Keaton in The Other Guys. So then, using the find feature, I start at the very beginning of the screenplay, and I type in my character name. Then, I go through and I write this character's dialogue. I've already got placeholder dialogue for all of my characters by this point. I don't do this until after my first draft is complete. So, go to the very beginning of the screenplay. You type in the name of the character that you want to work on dialogue. Hopefully, you have their voice in your mind. And you have their characteristics in your mind. So, go to the very beginning of the screenplay. You type in the name of the character that you want to work on dialogue. Hopefully, you have their voice in your mind. And you have their characteristics in your mind. If they remind you of a character that you've seen on screen, use that character to your advantage. If they remind you of a person that you've known personally, use that to your advantage. Imagine them in your mind and then just use the find feature. Don't do anything else except their dialogue. Go through it a few times if you have to. But you just bounce through there one piece of dialogue at a time. Until you have completely smoothed out the way you want your character to talk. The types of mannerisms your character has. You may want to use a parenthetical to say things like shrugs, winks, stuff like that. You know, just to define the little quirks that your character may have. Does your character laugh a lot? Does your character cough a lot? If your character's got bronchitis like I do right now, they might wheeze. <laughs> And you could put that kind of stuff in your parentheses if you want to. And once you're done with that character, that's when you go back to the beginning and you pick a new character to work on. And their own smart dialogue. In which the dialogue drives the story forward. It's not for the sake of explaining the story to the audience. You need to use moving pictures to explain your story. Use dialogue to drive those moving pictures forward. The number one way to learn how to do this is through trial and error. So just get out there and do it. Over time, you'll fine tune your style. Another great way to write smart dialogue is to do people watching. Go sit down in a cafe, listen to people talk. Go to a mall, listen to people talk. And then sit down and write conversations based on what people actually say in life. And another great thing is to have a table read with actual actors so that you can hear your character's dialogue read back to you. It's a great tool. Uh, I use that on the underdogs. On the underdogs, I did not use my little technique of going from character to character to define the dialogue. Instead, after finishing my second draft, I got a table read of people together, and it was a virtual table read. And I followed along in final draft while they all read the script to me. And then I made little marks in places where I felt like I might want to make changes. Like Miss Cross, 
I think she sounds a little too much like a textbook. And so the next step for me with the underdog screenplay is I'm going to be going through this process of command find so that I can make sure that everybody's dialogue sounds the way that I want it to. Chet, you're toast after school. You're toy? And the fun thing about the underdogs is I'm writing scenes as we're shooting. That's new for me. Normally, I like to have a lockdown screenplay before photography begins. So on that note, I'm going to announce the code word. And uh, the code word is apple. Use the word apple in a sentence and put that in the comments below this video. The people who place a sentence with the word apple in the comments I will take those people, make sure that they have subscribed to the channel, and then I will hold a random drawing. And the item that I will be giving away is a limited edition Miles to Go DVD set that includes a copy of the Film Junkie and a copy of the disc that contains bonus content. And what would be fun is if you can come up with an expository dialogue sentence. That would be great. So thank you for tuning in. And until next time, keep it mega.